What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for yet another Tottenham update. Sim still not here, so we're in the capable hands of Brian Daigle. How you doing, my brother? I'm okay, brother. After the uh, technical issues we've just endured, I'm ready and raring to go. I hope you're good, brother. What technical issues? There's never any technical issues here at We Are Tottenham TV. <laughs> um, but first and foremost, we're going to get start off talking about the injury news. Ben Davis has picked up a calf issue and is expected to miss the remainder of the season, as Timo Werner will also miss the remainder of the season after going off in the Arsenal game in the first half. So what's your reaction to those two players being out for the rest of the season? No fit left back uh, for the remaining games. Well, what makes me laugh is we started this season with five left backs. <laughs> Literally, we, we had Destiny, Perisic, Davis, Seth and Regulon. And we're down to zero. Um, it's just, it's just, you can't make this stuff up. You cannot make this stuff up. Timo Werner, um, I think he looked, as soon as you saw it, it was his hamstring. You know that's going to be a, a while. So I think that one was pretty much writing on the wall. Ben Davies, as Ash Postacoglu said, was just about to get a run in. Um, and now he can't. And do you know what? This season cannot end soon enough. It really can't the way we're going. Um, bad news for Ben and now we have to see what goes on with our left back issues yeah you got to assume that Emerson Royale steps in I mean that's probably the way he is going to go I mean if it was up to me I'm not sure I mean do we have much options maybe I was, I was going to say play it play more forward thinking player at left back but Timo Werner's out so that rules that one out who, who could you play yep. there? I mean, Brains in the WhatsApp group said potentially Oli Skip could be a good option there. But, I mean, your guess is as good as mine. Is there any other alternatives apart from Emerson Royale? The only other way I can think of is, like I said to you, when we were doing that panel show with Ashmatic and we are talking about this with Poro and Destiny, and I said Kulu. Because mm. then you've got, you've got Johnson who can play on the right. So the, there is that option, but I just can't see him doing anything other than Emerson. Yeah. I guess... Um, it could have come at a worse time for us because we are season is pretty much over and we do have that Man City game, which we probably would prefer not to win. So I guess it could have come at a, a worse time, couldn't it? Exactly, exactly. If you're going to have an injury drink, uh, an injury crisis, have it when you're trying to deny Arsenal the title. So it, well, the, work, the Lord works in mysterious ways, as they say. <laughs> Shame it hasn't worked for us that way for the other parts of the campaign. But let's uh, move on and talk about yeah, some I transfer think. news. And let's talk about Timo Werner. Has Fabrizio Romano says that Tottenham will decide this month about whether to activate the buy option clause for Timo Werner worth 16 million euros from RB Leipzig. Now he has played his last game in a Spurs shirt in this loan. What's your reaction to that? Would you like to see us take up that option or would you like to see us uh, move on to different targets? I'm, I'm, so, I'm so split down the middle with this one because whereas I think his crossing is so hit and miss, his finishing is definitely not as good as what, what it was in, in his pomp at uh, RB Leipzig. Um, he does cause defences trouble on that wing when he's running. It's his final delivery. You never know what you're going to get. Um you and I have discussed this and said if we bought another top draw winger in, him as a squad player, okay. But if he was to be the winger, then I'm a no. Um, <clears throat> I think we need to do better. We need to do better. I don't think it's worked out. As much as I wanted it to, I don't think it's worked out. What about you? Yeah, I'm kind of of the same thing. I mean, my my mind flips up on this like every single week. Uh, some some weeks I'm like, you know what, he'll be a good squad asset, and then the other times I'm thinking, we just need better. I mean, he's just not. I wouldn't say not fit for purpose because he do does have some really good attributes, but he's just such a frustrating player to watch crossing um, hit and miss like you say finishing ability is next to nothing really I mean <laughs> how many chances does the guy miss um, it's really frustrating so I'm looking at it and we saw the reports that we spoke about yesterday about um, Illing Jr. from Juventus and I saw another report saying the price is a similar price point to what Timo Werner is so if you're looking at bringing in a top left winger or a top striker and move Sonny over to left, whichever one we decide to go for, and Timo Werner versus Samuel Illing Jr. is the kind of swallow option, which one would you prefer to go for? Illing Jr., and only reason is homegrown. Only reason it, it gives us another place to, to fill. Um, and this guy is a lot younger and can probably have a higher ceiling in his career rather than Timo um, so, yeah, I think I would go for him just based on the homegrown. 
Yeah, and you're looking at the wages for Timo as well. Apparently, we have been paying all the wages, and it's been about 165,000. And I guess for a squad player, uh, we could do much better uh, for that price in, in wages. Right. And Samuel Willing Jr., I mean, he'll probably cost about half of that in wages. Uh, exactly, exactly. And uh, that's what we've got to look at, isn't it? And if we're, the homegrown thing is to become very, very important. And if we are going to be in Europe as well, so, so yeah, I think just with his age, his potential uh, to, to develop under under the Spurs management, I think I would have to go for him. Timo Werner, unfortunately for me, just hasn't worked out. Yeah, I would agree with that. Let's talk about Santiago Jimenez now, because uh, conflicting reports going online today. Calcio and Mercato say that Jimenez is now expected to join a Premier League team this summer with Tottenham competing for his signature. Feyenoord want to raise 50 million euros by selling the striker ahead of the upcoming summer transfer window. Um, and then Tom Barkley did say that Spurs sources have played down interest in Santiago Jimenez, despite the Mexican being in attendance at the North London derby. A suggestion he is no longer a target so it's very nice of us to uh, wine and dine him at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium star treatment but apparently he's not a target well this has got written all over for me and I'm going to call it as I see it this has got what we've had with many players under this uh, this ownership come had a chat with Levy Levy doesn't want to pay what it is or the wages that they're asking and that's the end of it We'll move on to another target. It, it, I just don't see why he was at the ground with his agent. And now there's talks that obviously, no, you're no longer a target. There has obviously been talks, whether they've broken down via the Feyenoord side or whether they've broken down via the Tottenham side is up for debate. But if I had to put money on it, I know what side I would bet that broke it down. Um, and it looks like this still may not be happening. I, I have put a uh, pretend to be shocked uh gif on the tweet from the spurs express um probably they're not in a pit we're not they're not uh, under financial constraints so uh no jewels music <laughs> um Obviously, I've, I've made it clear my thoughts on Santiago. I think he's a top player, top talent, and I think he will do well in the Premier League with the attributes that he does have. So it is a for source of frustration for me that these links are coming out. We don't know how accurate they, they are. Um, but having said that, I've also said in the last couple of months, we should be focusing on wingers rather than attackers. But with the news coming out from Ali Gold that he assumes that Sonny will move back over to the left, then a striker definitely is one of the key priorities this summer, if that is the case. So, I mean, he fits the mould perfectly. I really believe that. I do think there are other strikers out there that can do that. I think he offers something different to what Sonny does as well. And also assuming that Richarlison, I don't know what's going to happen with Richarlison this summer as well. So there aren't any concrete leaks on, Rich um, on Richarlison leaving the club or anything. So he, I, I've got to assume at this stage he is going to stay. So... Yeah, it is very frustrating that Spurs have kind of suggested that they're going to rule out, rule themselves out of signing Santiago Jimenez, and at the price of fifty million, you can't, you can't think to get a top striker for less than that, surely. Exactly. Well, you got to remember we're, we're all talking, and it'll keep coming up until we get the replacement for Harry Kane. Not saying at that level, but a recognised, established, prolific goal scorer. It's always going to come around. There's 100 million sitting from that transfer fee. Should Richarlison go, and I'm kind of the other side of you, I think there is uh, a good chance he could go. Then we are really, really needing a striker, and the whole world is going to know how badly we need one. Um, and if Sonny is going to the left, the striker becomes as paramount as the number six, doesn't it, really? Um, and it will leave a lot to do for us in the summer. Let's just assume for one second that Richarlison is going to stay. Let's just assume that right okay. what is your main priority then if, if Richarlison does stay would you prefer Sonny to stay down the middle or would you like to see him move back over to the left so would you like to sign a left wing or a striker as priority uh, out of that too I'd rather have Richarlison up top and go for a go for a, a really good left winger I think we saw what Richarlison is capable of in his purple patch Again, he picked up another knock. He's also come out and spoken very openly with something I'm very, very close to with his mental health. Um, I think there is a striker there. And one thing I really wanted him to start against Arsenal because one thing he would have done is he would have given that central defence or any central defence a real tough time and really put pressure on them. So if Richarlison was to stay, I think a left winger is much more important than finding a, a, another striker.
Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, let's move on. Let's talk about another striker that Spurs have been linked to today. And he goes by the name of Kevin Denke. Football transfers, publication out in Belgium, have claimed that Tottenham have contacted Bruges uh, striker Kevin Denke about a possible summer transfer. By Leverkusen, Borussia Dortmund and Napoli have all put out feelers uh, for the potential summer move. He does look like a really interesting striker. Quick, strong, uh, got really good aerial abilities, scores a ton of goals in the the Belgian league um, successful take-ons he's really strong at progressive carries he's really strong at progressive passes as well um, he is really strong at 23 goals this season in around uh, 26 games or 25 games which shows um, you know someone that can definitely find the back of the net you got a caveat it that it is in the Belgian league um, but 23 yeah. years of age uh, having a real breakout season there he's also uh, throughout his career has played on the wing as well so can be a bit versatile albeit this season has been predominantly as number nine what would you say to a transfer like that so first of all i will need to open up google and do danny rose's favorite thing to have a, a good look at him um what i will say listen what you said to me and the information you were given sounds like he's a a, a very got, got good potential but uh obviously someone you spoke about a lot last season playing in the exact same league gift or bam yeah. Um, we have to be very, very careful. This guy does sound like, like you said, he's got qualities that could be very, very beneficial to us, especially that versatility you mentioned about being able to play on the wing. But I, I obviously, I don't know a single thing about him until you mentioned it. But what I will say, the teams you've mentioned sniffing around him aren't too bad, are they? So uh, he must be uh, of some quality for big teams like that to be having a, a good look at him. Yeah, it always interests me when we're going for these kind of players and the likes of Borussia Dortmund and Bayer Leverkusen are going for them because, you know, they they rarely miss when they get these kind of players from these kind of leagues. So their scouting network is very strong. You see Borussia Dortmund pick up these talents all the time. Leverkusen as well with uh, Victor Boniface that has come in and done the business from this year in a title winning season for Bayer Leverkusen. So look, I I'll put my hands up. I've, I've never seen him play. I've just looked at the, um, the data and the analytics of what he does bring and he does seem like someone that would fit into this team as the number nine the, the thing i will say with this as well if he, if he does come in and fair play comes in again this t this team and this club need to find an established striker we bring in this guy that's a whoever comes in if it's someone like this guy denki they have got enormous shoes to fill and there is a lot of pressure that goes with it and I would like us to get another recognised striker that is more prolific, that is more established. Um, but it's going to be a huge ask, isn't it, to come in and say, right, we've lost Kane. Here you go, 23 years. How old did you say, 23 years old? Yeah. So, so yeah, it, it's a big ask. But like you said, what, the one saving grace I will say is, like you said, the German clubs recently do not miss on their young talent. They really do not. And obviously, we've learned that with English talent from close quarters. Um so we'll have to wait and see if this one is just another name in the hat. And last but not least, let's talk about Tosin Adarabayo again. We brought you the news yesterday that Spurs are still in the race, but it looks as though Spurs might be out of the race very soon. As Scott Wilson from the Echo says that Newcastle look increasingly likely, likely to fend off Premier League competition to sign Tosin Adarabayo on a free transfer and it looks like his Newcastle are offering him wages in excess of £100,000 a week so I mean I think it makes sense from all parties first of all he'll probably get a lot more game time at Newcastle I think he'll probably be a starter there week in week out at Spurs you're probably looking to play him um, you know as competition for Kuti Romero potentially even Mickey van der Ven as well so as much as I rate Tosin Adarabayo and I think he's a good player I think this one probably makes sense yeah, I mean, listen, I, I, as we spoke yesterday, I'm a big fan of Tosin Adrabio. The season we should have got him should have been last season. Um, when Newcastle come in and put those amount of wages there, there's no way I, I would want to hear Spurs have got him on a free and paying him over 100 grand a week to sit on the bench or be a backup. So if Newcastle are putting that kind of money in, whether I would want him or not, whether I think he would be the right fit right now, it's out the window because there's no way Tottenham Hotspur, as much as I would love the player, should be paying 100 grand a week. And we, we remember last season, he wanted Monaco over us, didn't he? So he's yeah. clearly more incentive, incentivized yeah. by uh, finances rather than club. Um, and at Newcastle, listen, they're a growing team. 
And if they're going to go big this summer and that's it, well, there's no reason we, we shouldn't even try and compete with 100 grand plus. Yeah, I don't even think it's incentivized money over um, club. I think it's maybe incentivized development and playing time as well, because I don't think he gets the required playing maybe, time at Tottenham. Maybe. Maybe, especially when you look at Newcastle's injury rows this season. I mean, we're talking about injury rows. We don't even compare to what Newcastle have had to endure all season. And I've always had a soft spot for Newcastle. If he goes there, he, like you said, he will get a lot more game time. He will do. So uh, we've missed the boat on that one. Uh, should have been last season. But like I said, no way should we pay over 100 grand a week for him. It's not bad, is it? I know Shah's done really well this season, but I, I do expect that like, if he goes there, a back two of Sven Botman on the left and Tosin Adorabayo on the right sounds like a really good pairing, doesn't it? It sounds like a very, very tall pairing as well. Bloody hell. Um, but yeah, that will be a formidable centre-back pairing if they both can stay fit. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that is your Tottenham update for today. Let me know in the comments section below your thoughts regarding all the news tours we've brought to you today. Go and subscribe to Tottenham on tour as well for some brilliant Tottenham content. But thanks, Brian, for coming on. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, yeah, come on, you Spurs. Fun.